What's going on guys? I'm on the only water cool fool. Today we're going to be doing a better overview of the motherboard than I did on the via webcam. I actually have the manual and some of the stuff that I want to go over with I had to save because I couldn't memorize every dang thing here. So let's go ahead and do the back of the motherboard because that's pretty much standard you know connections and everything so I'm going to go ahead and lower you guys down hopefully and won't have an issue so let me go ahead and do that and hopefully the motherboard will come into view like so alright guys so let me go ahead and tilt the camera so here's the back like I said before you have your PS2 buttons here or uh, connections for old school mouse and keyboard which is awesome you get four USB 2.0s which are located here and here and then we have four USB 3.0 which is right here you're gonna have your Ethernet connection right here then you're gonna have SPDIF and then uh, also this supports 7.1 surround sound which is pretty cool because if you go here and I'll pull this up a little further you have uh, basically a separate PCB right here just for sound which is pretty nice on the motherboard okay we're gonna go on the flip it around on the back right here so you're gonna have your main uh, 12 volt for your CPU power then of course um, if you're in the extreme overclocking or LN2 or just want to have it for straight up looks you can also use a 4 pin for cleaner power going to your CPU alright next up let's slide her around we're sliding we're sliding okay again you guys didn't already know already you're only going to get four dim slots on the motherboard they are closer to the CPU to support higher frequencies however that doesn't guarantee that your CPU is going to be able to handle the frequencies. Uh, the standard I know for most X99 is about 2133 and anything higher it's going to be give or uh, take and it's going to be uh, dependent on the IMC on your memory controller on your CPU which is right here. Okay let's talk about the CPU. Uh, what they've done here uh, instead of 2011, there's a switch, which is probably down here, right here, um, that enables you to do 2,083 pins instead of the standard uh, 2011, which will allow better overclocking, which is pretty darn awesome, okay? So let me get my handy dandy book out to make sure I'm explaining the correct deal so it looks like this guy right here and this guy is going to be your BIOS so you're going to have a single BIOS or dual BIOS and that's going to be controlled here these two guys right here <coughs> excuse me so your BIOS switch is going to have the main BIOS and then your backup BIOS and then above here of course it's going to be your power button your clear CMOS and your reset so that is very nice I like it when you have you can just do a quick test power it on before you connect it to anything in your case you can like alright does it work do I get a signal okay cool now I can install everything and call it good so I definitely like that okay now let me go ahead and go back here to my other uh, deals gotta love it alright next you're gonna have your TGR which is located right here it's the center little button right here let me see if I can lower the camera it's gonna be this guy right here and I really didn't know what it was all I saw was TGR meaning trigger um, this is straight from the manual uh, this switch allows overclockers to jump between low and extremely high frequency in an instant after remaining at a low frequency during system boot and, and OS optimization the overclocker can engage <coughs> excuse me 
the trigger switch instantly to hit the target frequency, save their score, submission, grab the screenshot, and watch the records tumble. Basically, it's like a screenshot saver right here. Okay, next you're going to have the CPU mode switch. It's going to be located right here. So this is going to be default, and then uh, this is going to be OC mode, so the frequency automatically goes from the BIOS and does max performance, as always. Okay. You also have handy dandy voltage readout points which are located throughout the board here. Your CPU fan is here. Um, if you're using a stock cooler, I don't know why you would use a stock cooler with this guy right here. You should be using an aftermarket if you're getting this. In my opinion, you have a fan header here. And then we're going to move down here to this guy right here. Of course, you're going to get two, four, six SATA. And then you're also going to have a SATA Express. That's what this is called. I totally drew a blank when I was making a video about it. But this is your SATA Express. Okay, now we're going to move on. Moving on, moving on. So you're going to have your standard um, right here. You're going to have another system fan connector. You're going to have where you hook up your front panel audio. Or not front panel audio, but your power switch, reset switch, hard drive, activity light, and etc. USB 3.0. You're going to get two USB 2.0 connections, it looks right here. And then you're going to have an OC uh, pan, which says in the manual, I was like looking for parts and trying to look it up. Looked it up online, no help. However, um, read the manual, and this is for future expansion. So more than likely, they might be coming out something similar with the Asus um, ROG front panel, where it monitors your temperature, your frequencies. You can overclock on the fly, and etc. This motherboard does support Thunderbolt, so this is what this guy is right here. And then you, of course, you will have your SPDIF and you will have your front panel audio connection right here. <clears throat> Let me see what else, if there's any other goodies I need to tell you about before I go to the main focus on the motherboard itself. Do do do. Okay, I don't see anything too pertinent that I need to say. So we can go ahead and raise you guys up and uh, explain about the motherboard itself. So let's go ahead and go up. Okay. Making sure the camera doesn't move. Okay, there we go. Alright guys, um, I have a overlook and you might want to pause this if you decide to get this motherboard. So this is going to be kind of the main thing right here. So here you go guys. Hopefully you can see it and pause it. But um, setting up uh, AMD and or NVIDIA SLI Crossfire or, or SLI excuse me. One graphics card is going to come here. That's going to be your time 16 slot. Then if you want another time 16 slot, you're going to have to do it on this slot right here. Um, I don't know why in the manual it's one. This is going to be one, four, two, and three. That's how they're labeled. So you're going to need PCI Express one and four for time 16. If you decide to use this guy right here, I believe. So, that's in, and of course it says right here, observe steps one through five, installing an expansion card, installing um, Crossfire. And of course, um, if you want to do three cards, you're going to have to have this one filled up, skip this guy, then these two will fill up. Or if you want to get full four, all of them are going to be hooked up. And then also in the beginning of it, it kind of explains certain things so I got kind of heated that I couldn't use these two for time 16 so PCI 1 and 2 are going to be running at time 16 if you decide to do that then PCI 3 and 4 
are going to be running at um, times eight if you decide to do that. Um, PCI four shares the bandwidth of PCI Express one slot when PCI Express four slot is populated. The PCI slot will operate up to eight mode, and then when a fifty-eight twenty K CPU is installed, the PCI Express two operates up to eight times mode, and then the PCI Express three operates times four. And it says all PCI Express times 16 slots conform to the PCI Express 3.0 standard. And then you have three PCI Express uh, times one, which are these guys, one, two, three. So that's what you need to know. Um, also, this guy right here, the six pin connection. This is for if you're gonna install two or more graphics cards and overclocking the crap out of them. Um, that's what I'm going to do with my Titans. Um, right now, I'm able to get them up to like 1.5, 2, 4, 3, 4 gigahertz. So, I'm hoping that um, I might be able to get more overclocking. Of course, each port's going to vary depending on what you want. And of course, we have the water block that is installed here. And uh, it looks like I accidentally forgot. You have an LED code readout right here. This little guy is very, very, very handy when looking up codes. And more than likely, if you have a problem, they're going to have it right in the back of your manual. And it's uh, debug LED codes. And it's per pretty much going to explain hey, this is what this code can be, this is what this is going to mean, and everything like that if you're having problems. So let me go ahead and zoom this out. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a better look at what the board looks like. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and switch it on my ugly mug. Alright guys, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, I really appreciate the support. You also get M.2 SATA on there as well. And I'm not sure how many people are actually going to be using that. Uh, considering if I were going to put that M.2 SATA on there, um, I would want like a 500 gig uh, M.2. And those are kind of pricey. Um, it depends on your budget and everything. This is kind of the budget board, I would say, for overclocking. And some people are going to ask, well, why don't you get the Rampage? Uh, five extreme one was the price two it came with all bells and whistles that I really didn't give two craps about on it I don't need Wi-Fi I don't need Bluetooth yes it's a nice feature but I really don't need it um, I don't understand why manufacturers think they have to put on their high-end boards crap that most people and well this is just my opinion may not even use if you're a high-end gamer more than likely you're wired you're, you know, to your computer, so why would you want built-in Wi-Fi? That doesn't make sense to me. Even then, you don't even need to have Wi-Fi. You can use the Ethernet or power over Ethernet where it uses the electricity through your home to essentially get you uh, wired speeds or up to. I'm not saying you're going to get the perfect wired speed, but it uses basically copper wiring to transfer the signal from the one outlet to another outlet in your room and it has to be without a power brick or UPS or whatever it has to be directly plugged into the wall for you to get that to work alright video has gone long enough again thank you for your support I really do appreciate it and as always rate comment subscribe click that like button and remember guys no matter how bad of a day you're having try to have a great day now